Well, there must be some kind of more fundamental, more basic, more deep, more simple theory that accounts for why we have these intuitions. Okay? And utilitarianism, for example, is a theory that does just that. Why do we seem to have the intuition that it's, it's wrong to lie, or wrong to hurt people, or wrong to uh, um, uh, force people to do certain things? Well, maybe the idea that explains all of those intuitions is that what really matters in this life is human pleasure. And if you lie to them, or steal from them, or hurt them, or try to force them to do certain things that you want them to do, well, then you're compromising their pleasure or compromising their ability to gain pleasure. Okay. And that's um, an interesting and worthwhile and profound view. Okay. Could it really all just come down to that? Um, lots of philosophers even today think that it does. And of course, there's resistance too, and we can, we can sort of argue about whether the theory explains all of our intuitions or whether there are some intuitions that seem not to fit the theory and so on. And that's what philosophy is. That's what we're doing. That's what philosophy is all about. Throwing up theories that seem to explain our intuitions and then maybe trying to come up with um, scenarios that evoke other intuitions that, that, that provide evidence against the theory and so on. Okay. And I say that ethics is a good example of what philosophy is like quite generally because well, because that's what happens really in all branches of philosophy. I was just saying, that's really what philosophy is all about, is this, this kind of bandying about of intuitions and theories. Okay? So, for example, if we're doing metaphysics, metaphysics is the study of the sort of ultimate furniture of the world, that is, what sorts of things exist, what sorts of things are the most primitive kinds of entities in the world, um, is there a god, are there supernatural things, or somehow... Uh, objects that exist that are beyond the, the capacity of our senses to, to detect them and so on. Um, <clears throat> and so we might have an intuition about, say, whether two things can occupy the same space at the same time. Okay. And we might, in fact, have very strong intuitions to the effect that that is impossible. We might have strong intuitions about the very nature of being a thing, of being a, um, an object. Um, something that says, well, if you're an object and you've got a certain kind of impenetrability or solidity, some sort of feature that rules out you sharing the same space and time with the second object. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so then we try to, well, we don't rest content with that intuition, we try to explain it. We try to say, well, what is it about the nature of things quite generally, or about the nature of objects, or about the nature of the world, or whatever, that can explain this intuition of ours. And with any luck, explain other intuitions of ours, too. Because just like in science, a virtue of a philosophical theory is that it can explain lots of different things at once, in a sort of simple, elegant way. Uh, or if we're doing, say, epistemology, epistemology being the study of knowledge, what knowledge is, uh, why some beliefs uh, seem to be justified and others seem not to be justified, and so on. Well, if we're doing epistemology, we might have a, a certain intuition about um, when we have knowledge and when we don't. And that kind of intuition we want to try to capture with, again, a kind of general epistemological theory that accounts for all of our intuitions, just in the same kind of way that a scientific theory accounts for data that we've taken from experiments. Okay, well, that's really the end of the lecture, so I guess I just want to close with some thoughts about um, how you might try to apply critical reasoning as you move on. Obviously, if you go on and, and take more philosophy, in effect, you'll be doing critical reasoning all the time. That's what that's what philosophy is really all about. Uh, but even if you don't go on to take philosophy, I think this course should have been useful to you because it's given you some tools to deal with um, arguments in, in a very straightforward, natural, everyday kind of way. Everyone makes judgments all the time. We have views, um, political views, ethical views, um, views about how things ought to be done. 
And if you've got the resources of critical reasoning with you, you can test those, those judgments. You can try to explain those judgments. You can try to justify those judgments. You can compare those judgments to see whether they are consistent with each other or whether rather they uh, have some internal conflict. You can try to understand why people have the judgments that they make, and you can ask them why, and you can see if the reasons that they give really justify the conclusions that they, that they claim they justify or not. Okay? So, I hope you like the class. Go forth and reason critically. Thanks a lot.